Eclipses are the most powerful of all the different astrological energies. So much so that it's very common for folks to start feeling the pressure, the tension building in their life, the emotional upheaval, sometimes even weeks before. But always from that, there is an equal amount of potential for healing, insight, transformation, and positive change that can come from the pressure, from the tension. You know, I looked online the other day and what I see is a lot of doom and gloom type of predictions for this powerful eclipse coming up on April 8th, 2024. But I don't personally feel that at all. This eclipse feels very similar to all the other ones I've gone through. Again, yes, there's the tension. Yes, you might be feeling like your life is speeding up and like your life is giving you a series of challenges and lessons. And yeah, right now in this moment, maybe you don't see a way out yet of the fog, but I'm telling you from this is a glorious potential to radically change and improve your life. And what I see is an opportunity for people to make a significant positive change in their life. But I know that's kind of vague, of course, so that's why I'm making this video for you where I'll share now five more specific themes that you can expect from this powerful eclipse on April 8th, 2024. And if I have not said already, welcome to my YouTube channel, my friends. My name is Victor Odo, and it's a pleasure to have you. Theme number one, I wrote down heavy energy. I want to straight away get out of the way the elephant in the room, which is the fact that everybody, every astrologer, everybody and their uncle was predicting, you know, bad things, cataclysms. Oh, better watch out for April 8th, that type of thing. And on some level, I can see why people are saying that. Because eclipses are so potent and they do a wonderful job of magnifying and bringing and summoning up to the surface the individuals and also the collectives unresolved issues. And what a lot of sensitive people like you, empathic people, um, the, what, you, what sometimes happens with empathic folks is you can sense a couple of things. One, you can sense the collective unrest. You know, people like you and me, if you're watching a video like this, it's safe to assume that you're one that I'm sure has made the habit of looking at yourself and you're interested in personal development in some capacity and you have some level of experience with this. But most people don't. Most people have not been given the tools of transformation, basically. And because this eclipse is so potent and kicking up everybody's wounds and traumas and limiting beliefs and their conditioning and their outdated ways of thinking and their unresolved and unexpressed emotions, you walk outside and you can kind of feel that. You can feel there's like a disorienting, heavy, uncomfortable type of vibe, you could say. And you might even be seeing it. You might even be see, seeing people play this out because, again, they don't know what to do with themselves. They don't, they don't, you know, it's hard for us. It's hard for me. It's, it's not, not always for, easy for me to keep it contained. So on one hand, again, you're sort of probably sensing the collective unrest, basically, long story short. And secondly, it's often that the empathic, sensitive person can sense Almost like you can feel like some of your own stuff, unresolved issues that have been buried deep for a long time, way down beneath your conscious awareness, they're starting to kind of rumble and there's movement and it's starting to kind of come up. You don't even know what it is yet, but you know, you can sense there's something within yourself you're about to be, uh, you know, confronting, we'll say. So the combination of the two it, it can lead towards people feeling like, oh my God, shit's about to hit the fan. This is no good. There's something going on here in the collective. And on some level, that's true. But the difference is, my friend, you don't have to roll with these eclipses unconsciously like most people. The problem is when we are completely unconscious and we have something magnifying our wounds, we project it out there into the world and we sort of reenact some type of related, oftentimes painful circumstance as like a last ditch effort to teach ourselves this soul type of lesson, if you will, this karmic lesson. But if you're watching a video like this, that doesn't have to be your reality, even though it's most people's reality. 
You get to just simply look within yourself and do some self-inquiry, maybe some meditation, breath work, yoga, or just patience, self-observation. And you're likely to glean a lot of fascinating insights about yourself and possibly from this tension experience and create from yourself for yourself a tremendous amount of transformation and healing and, and lightening of your vibration all in the privacy of your own apartment building. You don't have to go out there. You don't have to play this out too much. So there's nothing to worry about. It's, it's, it's something to look forward to. It's like, you know what? Whether you want to... Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, all this, the feelings you're feeling, they're yours. They've been there. You've been walking around all through your days with them. And guess what? Even though they're below your conscious awareness, they've been affecting you. The way you think about life, the way you think about people, the way you relate with people, the way you think about yourself, the things you believe you can or cannot do and accomplish, the things you believe you do or do not deserve, all of which are heavily influenced by these unconscious energies. That, yeah, of course, they're uncomfortable, which is why you probably suppressed him in the first place. But guess what? Now this eclipse is coming over, giving you the opportunity to look at them, to see what's always been there. And if you're willing to see it, if you're willing to feel it, you can let it go forever. You can liberate yourself from them forever. And imagine the way you can go through life now on the other side of this imminent eclipse, lighter, more free, more you. Number two, the space, or I sometimes call it the void. This is one of my greatest challenges as a person who's into this type of stuff. It's when nothing is really happening in my life. It's when I really want clarity. What am I going to do next? What's next? There's something missing in my life and I don't know what it is. I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something that just is feeling boring, dull, blah, melancholy. I'm just not happy and I don't know why. And I'm trying to make things happen. It's not. Maybe you have some idea of what you want to do, but you don't know how to do it yet. You don't know how it's going to look. And you're really wanting to know because you have the sense this new thing, this new direction, this new chapter of your life, this new business, whatever it is, is going to bring you a lot of the things that you feel you're missing. Maybe a deeper sense of purpose. Maybe a deeper level of satisfaction, happiness, joy, passion. But what on God's green earth is it? Where do I begin? And sometimes we're just left to wonder in what I call the space or the void. Now, in the past, because I don't do well with boredom, <laughs> quite honestly, I would ignore what was always a very clear instinct to just chill. Just, 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 just let it be, Vic. It's going to happen. You're going to know what to do when the timing is right. And right now is the time just to be patient, bro. And I couldn't accept that. And I would, I would force things. And I would try things. And I would sort of like in a frenzied state try to make something happen. And what do you think happened with that? No, nothing good. No, nothing good. No, nothing productive. Nothing worthwhile. I ended up tired. And if anything, more confused than when I began. But for those who can listen to themselves, their intuition and simply allow themselves to not do, but more so to be, even though it's kind of boring and not much is happening in that space is when something new and awesome can come. I speculate the reason we need these downtimes is because we are so conditioned. We are so much running on our autopilot subconscious mind's programming that, that life has sort of bestowed upon it. And from this reactive, almost predictable way of going about life, we try to fix our problem. And Albert Einstein, many of you already know this, he said, you can't solve a problem. You're not gonna get clarity from the same level of consciousness that the problem originated from. So what do we need? We need to sort of like relax and elevate ourselves. Not in something that we're doing, like, okay, well, I'm gonna go meditate, Vic. It's not, it's not like that. It's more like just relax and allow our psyche to kind of 
I don't know, think outside the box, the best way I'm putting it. But that only really happens when you give yourself space. And ironically, thinking outside of the box tends to happen when you're not doing much thinking at all. When you sort of let go, it's like when you really want to find something, one of the best, fastest ways to find it is to stop looking for it. It's kind of the same jam, but it's hard. It's hard. And also you might have things in your life that you really do want to figure out. You really do want to resolve. You might have some things you need to let go of. And maybe that's the step. Maybe that's the next step for you is letting go of something. Maybe you're not going to get clarity until you stop hanging on to something you know you don't need. I remember for a long time, I wanted to move out to California and become a YouTuber as I am now. And, but, but I was spending so much time working on my medical marijuana grow operation. That was my livelihood at the time. I was supporting my family by growing weed in my basement, basically. And there came this point where the grow, my, my grow operation kept experiencing just ridiculous amounts of random, unexpected, rare, even problems. It was one thing after the other, after the other. And it wasn't that I was just experiencing some sort of challenges. It was the fact that I knew these challenges were reflecting to me the fact that I don't belong doing this anymore. And I was in denial. I just kept trying to make it work. But eventually there came this point where I wanted to move out to San Diego and be a YouTuber bad enough. But the problem was I was so occupied. My mind was so engaged in the, the grow and I wasn't getting any clarity. I was still wondering, how, how will I make it out to San Diego? How will I make this work? I, I, I was waiting and waiting. No, nothing was ever coming. No answers ever came. I had to let go of the grow. I had this intuition to stop growing weed. So just let it go. And it was very hard because that was how I made my money. And I knew by stopping growing, I would be sort of broke by choice, which seemed asinine to me. And yet that was the, what I was led within, from within to do. And once I did that, once I let go of the grow, it wasn't instantly that I got a bunch of cool ideas. No, but after a few days of like wallowing in the space, basically, these new, fresh, sort of inspired ideas began to come to me. And it was from those seeds, from those ideas that within a few months, I was out living in San Diego, kicking butt on YouTube. And number three, discovering something new about yourself. From this space, oftentimes what does tend to happen is people don't do well in the space. On one level, intuitively, you'll probably sense very strongly you are to just relax, it's all gonna be okay, and you're safe to just trust the process and trust your journey. But that's usually not good enough for people. So in this space, most of us succumb to old habits, old things to distract ourselves from uncomfortable feelings of being in the unknown, essentially. For me, it's like going online, social media. For some, you know, in the past, it used to be alcohol and, and smoking a lot of weed. And, you know, we all got our vices. And it's very common to get really down on yourself when, when these vices kind of come back online. And then the combination of not doing well in the void, in the space, lowering our frequency essentially with, with these bad habits, and then the awareness that this is not serving us. And then from there, we shame ourselves and beat ourselves up. And oh my God, this is another reason why I think people really, you know, dread and, and see these eclipses as like a bad, a bad thing to be kind of endured or prepared for. It's because it's not a, it's a multifaceted misery kind of. But from this, from this tension, from this pressure, it sort of forces us to look at ourselves and our life in a new way. And from this, there's the opportunity to discover something new about yourself, to, to go a little deeper within your shadow work journey. I'm a big fan of Carl Jung. I talk to about him all the time. He's a Swiss psychologist. He was around at the time of Freud, real, real OG in the, in the realm of psychology. And he talks about what he, he, he calls all this essentially the, the individuation process, which is his sort of more clinical term for the spiritual awakening process, the hero's journey you might hear 
you know, Joseph Campbell calls that. It's like this inner exploration. It's this whole process of self-discovery, basically. And these eclipses, whether you care about this or not, it basically puts you in this hero's journey, this individuation process. And the way Carl Jung explains it is he says, we're, we're going okay. Everything's in our, our life may be okay. We're feeling decent enough and no real problems. And then the eclipse starts to kind of approach and we fall from grace. We start to kind of fall and like devolve into our shadowy parts of our psyche. And we start to kind of feel from that place and act from that place. And our thoughts start to reflect this descent into our unconsciousness. And then most people, even though we all do our best, initially will project this state of consciousness out there into the world and, and, and into some kind of external circumstance. And it will seem like I'm feeling this way because I just got laid off from my job. But it's like, is it really that? Or is it, there, there's more to the story, most likely. Your emotions might feel even over the top. Um, but anyway, from this, from this sort of descent into our, our, our stuff, and even though you might be playing it out and there might be scenarios in your life kind of reflecting and mirroring this, from here, we can extract what he calls the gold, the gem. There's, there's, we don't do, this is not a mistake. This is not an actual fall from grace. We're not devolving. We're not descending. No, we're ascending. But in order to go up higher, we have to go in ourselves and see where we're carrying the weight. And I know you've probably done a lot of work on yourself and you might think you figured yourself out already, but there's always more. At least what I've learned, there's always more. And you might discover something more, something else that has been sort of lodged in your nervous system, in your psyche, holding you down from this next awesome step. And when you can find that, it's like a reunion. And you get to, you get to find it that, that, that awareness usually is enough, that light of your consciousness is often enough to completely dissolve it and eradicate it from your system and your life, freeing yourself forever. And as you do that, there's also this like reclaiming of the, the gold. What is the gold? The gold is you in your pure state that has been being distorted by this shadowy part of yourself. It's your essence. It's your soul, it's your innocence, it's your uninhibited creative genius. It's the way you used to be when you were an innocent little baby, connected to spirit, connected to the infinite. That is who you are. And as uncomfortable as all the stuff I just described is, it's a gateway into yourself. So it's an opportunity, long story short, to do some really good inner work. Really, it's a good time for inner exploration to really find out who you are, what makes you tick, what drives you, what motivates you. It might surprise you. It might surprise you. And I recommend being brutally honest with yourself. For example, what do you think drives me to make these YouTube videos? It's my purpose, it's a passion. I feel honestly guided to do so. That's all true. But if I'm really honest, I'm really open with you, there's another part of me that does like the attention, that's seeking attention, seeking validation. There's a part of me I'm still working on, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, because I think all of us have that to some extent. But eclipses, they can kind of give you insights into those truths about yourself that you don't want to even admit to yourself, let alone to other people. But it's only when we can be really honest with ourselves and really look deep and hard at ourselves that we can be more fully rounded, well-rounded, conscious people. And if we try to ignore or suppress those parts of ourselves that we're ashamed of or embarrassed of or don't want to even acknowledge, then guess what? Simultaneously, you're also gonna suppress the good stuff. Your, your light, your, the, your, as Carl Jung calls like the, the numinous nature of yourself, the, 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 the magnificent, the astonishing parts of yourself, of the soul, of the spirit. 
that also goes away when you start to sort of compartmentalize yourself. And it's all going to be very difficult with the light of this eclipse, even though it doesn't really give you light at all, obviously, but it's a metaphor, <laughs> bad metaphor. Um, you got the idea, my friend. You can choose to join the, the crowd and say, oh, wow, I'm going to not go out of my house on April 8th, but good luck because wherever you go, there you are. You can't hide from yourself. You can't hide from the eclipse, but don't bother. Don't try. Take advantage. Take advantage. Be willing to look at yourself honestly. And this energy that drives most people bananas can radically change your life. I can guarantee you that. Number four, one of the big benefits of this type of energy is what I'll call, for lack of a better term, purpose upgrade. So if you're really wanting to discover your life purpose, essentially, it's a good time to get clarity on that, even though you might feel less clear currently in the moment than ever before. Or if you've been doing your thing, maybe you've been happy, maybe you have a career or an outlet that brings you joy. When this happens, sometimes that thing, whatever it is, may start to bring you less joy and, and feel more forced, like, mm, this used to once satisfy me so much, but I just can't get into it anymore. And that can be kind of unsettling because that, that sort of begs the question, well, well what, what, what next? What do I do? I thought I found my thing. Again, more and more of the space. But from that, if you can just sort of chill and allow all the things I've been sharing about this individuation process, all these things to kind of ensue, you will get these like light bulb type of ideas in this energy of a new thing you can do, a new way of doing maybe what you've already been doing. Um, a, a good... What comes to mind is when I stopped doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. I began one-on-one -on -one coaching back in like 2000, maybe 18, 19, 18 or so, 17, 18. Began doing like one-on-one -on -one spiritual awakening coaching, basically. And that was awesome because that was like, after I quit growing weed, as I mentioned, I was, I was broke. And I went into credit card debt, big time, 50, 50K in credit card debt, no joke. I was paying bills with I had like eight credit cards. At one point, they all became maxed out. I had nothing except this idea to start one-on-one -on -one coaching. And man, it, I loved it. it. It paid the bills. I, I did pretty well financially with that. I was doing pretty good on YouTube at the time, so it, it worked pretty quickly. And I was making more money than I ever made before in my entire life. And I was loving it. I was working less hours than most people and loving it. I was going to the beach. I used to go to the beach in San Diego. I'd go to Mission Beach with a little camper chair, a little like crappy chair from Dick's Sporting Goods, like $5 chair. And I'd set up shop there with my, my like notebook and my phone. And I would call people from all over the world and do this coaching thing for a few hours, four or five days a week. And I'd go home and I'd play with the kids. And man, it was awesome. I thought, finally, I found my purpose. I found my, my passion. And I was so happy. And I was making friends with these clients. It was lovely. But then there came a point to my surprise and to my disappointment that that same thing that once was so amazing, it started to feel forced. It started to bring me less joy and less satisfaction. I even started to run into weird, not weird, but like ch challenges and, and problems that never used to be there. I got to a point where I had too many one-on-one -on -one clients and I started getting people mixed up and the quality of my coaching was going down. I haven't had one person say, Vic, you don't even know who I am. And they were right. I didn't. I was, I, was, I was a mess. And I thought, what's, what's gone wrong? Why is this happening? I thought this was like my purpose. And I had this sense, just there's something else. Oh, God, really again? God, higher self, something else again? Come on. Back to the unknown? I'd rather not. Too bad. There's something better. Just kidding. Um, sometimes I do these funny mannerisms. I don't think any of you know. It. There's this funny show. I think you should leave, and that guy just cracks me up. So sometimes I've been I've been like lately sprinkling that in a little bit. So anyway, you have to you have to just be patient with me as I geek out a little bit. Um, but anyway, I did listen to my intuition, and I stopped taking on coaching clients, knowing once again I was like willingly putting myself into this precarious financial situation. But I had this strong knowing, this, this knowing that there is something else. I'm going to be okay financially. And I, I had this to trust. So I did. And I stopped taking clients. And then once I had like no clients and no money, boom, another idea, another idea out of almost nowhere. 
And the idea was so perfect. It lit me up. It was, it was to run a retreat. Now, this seemed to make sense on all, almost all levels. On one hand, I could work with about the same amount of people I was coaching all at one time. I could take them through a deeper transformation in less time, maybe a few days, four or five days. I happened to live at that time real close to Sedona, Arizona, where I knew I could do it. I had friends that were doing retreats at the time, and my friend Bridget Nielsen in particular kind of helped me, show me the ropes a little bit. And... Um, I also knew that I might be able to make money doing this too. And maybe as much as I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. So anyway, all this worked out. All this was perfect. But there was a fear. I thought, well, I've never done retreats before. What if, I, what if no one even wants to come? What if I'm not good enough for people to come and, and travel all the way to Sedona for? So I had all this fear and stuff. Um, but luckily by that point, I had developed a fair amount of trust in these kind of new endeavors. And I've learned that whenever there's a new idea, oftentimes when it's the right move, there's like opposing reactions, like a reaction that contradict each other. On one hand, just thinking about these retreats felt light. It felt light. Whereas the coaching felt heavy and kind of like too much work kind of thing. This felt light. It felt expansive and it felt like it was a vibrational match. It brought me this genuine feeling of excitement and passion and like soul alignment. That's one of the effects. But the other half, the other part of it was that same idea made me feel terrified. I was scared out of my wits. All the doubts and insecurities, that kind of stuff was coming up to the surface big time. But anyway, these... Purpose upgrades tend to go that way. What you're doing is no longer working. At first, you hope it's just some small thing that will resolve itself. But as time goes on, you're shown, nope, it's out of alignment. And you start to realize this. This is out of alignment. I know it, but I don't want to have to face the unknown. So I'm going to continue a little while longer and just naively hope for the best. It just gets worse. It just gets heavier. It just falls apart faster and faster and faster until you finally let go and go towards this other idea that usually comes around that same time that feels light and expansive and appropriate for you. And even though there's fear, that is just another growth opportunity as well, my friend. And finally, number five, positive change. Oftentimes people roll into the eclipse season doing okay. Life is okay, no complaints not looking to make any changes necessarily. In fact, I feel kind of secure as I am. And then the eclipse kind of comes around and sort of throws several monkey wrenches into your nice little life there. And you're confronted with problem after problem after problem. Some of them are minor. Like for one of the things for me, I've been noticing my, my diet seems like it needs to change. I've been eating kind of the same thing for a while. And all of a sudden these same foods are starting to bother me and mess my blood sugar. So it's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta look at that. There might be other bigger things like with your career, your relationship. Maybe you have some unresolved issues within yourself that are impacting your, your intimate relationships. And that's like a real pressing matter. And then there's a bunch of other little things sprinkled in there. And, and all of a sudden you just feel like overwhelmed and bombarded with problems stacking up, spilling over on your plate there. And, and when I say something like positive change, you're like, uh, uh, Jim, no, this is like the worst Oh, this is all bad. All these horrible things are happening to me. My diet's a freaking mess. My marriage is falling apart. My friendships are fizzling out. My, I have no idea what the hell I'm going to do with my career. Positive change? I don't think so. And what I found is these eclipses can also magnify your potential. You might think you're okay, but it's like your higher self is coming alive in you saying, you could be better, dude. You could be a lot better. You could be a lot happier. You could have a lot more money. You could have a lot better friendships. You could have a lot healthier of a body, all these things. But guess what? You're not going to be motivated to change unless you realize the misalignments in your life, psyche, body, etc. that may at one point been okay. But now you're upgrading. You're changing. This, these, free, these eclipses coming in, they almost like demand we go through life each time at a higher uh, vibration, a higher frequency, more in alignment, 
less sloppiness, less misalignment. And what these eclipses are doing, they're just making you aware of all of it at one time. All the misalignments. And it's overwhelming and it makes it feel like, like, like your life is going south. But eventually, once we stop complaining about it, which we all do, and we say, okay, I'm get out my pen and paper and make a list of all these freaking problems I need to address. What can I do? All right, bro, like for me, I'm eating too much. <laughs> too, I eat this stuff called goo. It's like buckwheat and honey and protein powder and like almond milk before my workouts. And for a while, I felt like, man, I get such, I get really good pumps and I felt great. All of a sudden, the same freaking thing is making me feel like it's messing with my blood sugar or something. I think I'm allergic to the weed or something. I don't know. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking currently, like, what, what could I switch it up with? Now I got a little protein shake. Not as, not as exciting. I enjoy the taste of the goo, but I feel 10 times better. Okay, positive change has resulted from that. Last week, I felt like an insecure teenager with my wife. All my like issues from like seventh grade, sixth grade, eighth grade were coming up so strongly. And I felt taken over by this teenager self. And, it was, and my wife was going through it as well uh, in her own way. And we had this really intense, like come to Jesus type of moment within our marriage. We've been married 15 years, my wife and I. And sometimes we get to these points where it feels like, I don't know if we can even continue. It's been a long time, a long journey. It's not been easy. And it's like big problem. So I wasn't sleeping. I was, I was a mess because there was this huge unresolved thing within my marriage, which I have children. So it's a huge deal just sort of looming over me, not really being resolved. The diet's a mess. This is going on. I'm feeling bored with my career. This is the first YouTube video I made in a while because something I've been doing for so long is all of a sudden kind of boring. I don't know my next step currently, but I know it's going to be a badass step. And that's the thing. My wife and I have gone deeper into our marriage. My, my body is cleaning up and I'm feeling better because I'm changing things. So from this mess, you just have to ask yourself, what can I change? What can you change? What do you think all of this is trying to tell you? Not me, but your own life. I can give you a hint. It's that you could be doing better. What does better look like to you? What if you weren't limited by your conditioned thinking and believed in yourself fully? What would you do? How would you behave? Where would you go? What kind of dreams would you pursue? That's the type of thinking I invite you to do during this time. Don't just get swallowed, don't get swallowed up in the undertow like most people. You can use this. You're, you're built for this. You would not be watching a video, especially 25, 30 minutes in like this. If you weren't equipped for this energy, you may have done this transformation shifting thing many lifetimes ago. Who knows? You have what it takes to transmute all the problems, all the misalignments in your life into something grand. And I believe on some deep level, you know that. So let me just remind you, my friend, of something you already know. And then with that said, I'm going to wish you off and have an amazing day. Okay, my friends, if you do still feel stuck, even after my little speech there, um, I'm going to offer you something that I do once in a while as a free somatic release breathwork ceremony. It's a powerful ceremony. I normally charge money for it. I'm going to give it to you today for free. I'll leave a link down below. You just put in your email address and it's going to help you move stuck energy. It's going to help you come into more of a sense of alignment with your true self and have insights and clarity. It's a very powerful ceremony. I don't recommend doing it all that much. Do it like maybe once a month, if that. But I'm going to give it to you if you want it. I'll leave a link down below. Check it out. With that said, God bless you all. <clears throat> Have an amazing day. Peace.